Good afternoon, or well, maybe it's the morning, maybe it's evening. Um, I'm Edmund from Sacred Grove, and you'll see the lovely Triquenta here. Um, that's my brand, and this is my business. And I'm going to spend a little bit of time uh, getting into why uh, I've created such a business called Sacred Grove. And uh, there's three particular plants in question uh, that I love and I'm trying to allow them the capacity to express themselves through my products uh, to you and your body. Uh, some of them you can take internally, some externally. Um, and this journey or the creation of Sacred Grove is essentially the sum total of my life work. So when I was four or five, I'm clearly an Anglo-Saxon. I'm sixth generation South Australian. I was born in the Adelaide Hills and I asked, why is nature and farming separate? And so I've spent the rest of my life working around parts of the world and uh, quite a lot of time here in the central desert um, in Australia, uh, getting to know different perspectives of um, medicinal plants. Um, and naturally, yes, there's medicinal plants all around the world, but I felt in a way obligated to get to know Australia and then allow other people that can't live in the central desert with indigenous people uh, some of these beautiful plants and the three plants that I focus on the two slightly lesser ones are sandalwood which a lot of us know about from joss sticks and incense and those sorts of things cosmetics it's a beautiful plant and uh, it's uh, yes it has the aromatics but also has carminative compounds uh, and you can eat the nuts so it's a dry land farming option it also fits into the mosaic of this lovely, uh, um, of the biodiversity of uh, the dry regions of South Australia um, and other parts of the, the country as well. And native pine seems a bit of an odd choice, I know, but maybe aromatically it's close to myrrh, um, which is uh, one of the uh, three aromatics that Jesus might have smelt. Um, and so that one's a beauty and that's got some extraordinary anti-inflammatory compounds. Uh, as well and it's a favorite habitat for our robins um, the, in particular the flame robin that's very rare uh, loves to come to the uh, native pine and actually the roof above me is also native pine or Clytrus gracilis because it's termite proof so it has a lot of beautiful characteristics and I put those plants uh, as well as the lucky last that's the big one maybe which is the scented emu bush or eremophila or turnifolia of which there's many types, and there's over 300 odd Eremophilas. But the Eremophila alternifolia has many different names. In English, we call it scented emu bush, native honeysuckle, even poverty bush. Wow, that's because the cattle and sheep farmers thought, ah, this is a rubbish plant because our cattle and sheep won't eat it. We're going to get poor over this one. Right, oh, maybe that way of thinking for those animals. But if you look at a, from an indigenous perspective, this plant, number one, for certain things. Number one plant right throughout Central Australia for, in particular, decongestant expectorants, so coughs and colds, assisting with the reduction of pain, inflammation, maybe even a bit of a protection, this plant, because you know when you're carrying something that cares for you, it's in a way giving you its love, and then you can reciprocate by giving it your love. So this uh, Eremophila alternifolia, of which we've got some lovely pictures of the flowers here. This is the magenta type, and there's also a yellow type and a white flowering form. Many varieties. I've just got some. Um, this one, from the indigenous perspective, is a, is a carer, and it's still used today. Um, they make many different things, whether it be uh, rubs or uh, oils, uh, maybe essential oils, maybe not. Um, and, and possibly some tea. Tea is definitely something that I got into. So the Eremophila alternifolia, essentially I say it's the heart and soul of Australia. It's possibly one of the most loved plants in the country. And uh, as you all know, uh, when you're given something beautiful from someone, from their heart, this is uh, of more currency than gold. And uh, I guess I was given a little bit of an understanding about this plant from people's heart and so you treasure that uh, but then you're obligated to share uh, some of that story with other people and then if they care for that plant because it will care for them 
then they may love it. And every time you love something, you'll care for it. And uh, you may even start thinking about, let's care for this country full stop and the people that live here. So my journey really is representing these three lovely plants. So good old Eremophilor turnifolia, sandalwood, a little bit of a lazy plant, let's be honest. It is a parasite and we know parasites don't do a lot for a living. Um, and sandalwood is no exception, that's for sure. Just one little thing on the side of parasites. Um, sandalwood, it's the, it's the big bad boy in town that loves to take it. It'll, it'll kill a host plant quite happily. I've got some good ex examples of that on my property. But one of my sandalwoods, I decided, well, I'll put a, 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 a parasite on a parasite. So I've grown a lovely mistletoe on the branch of a sandalwood. It's like, well, let's see if you can do something for a living now. And as you may know, mistletoe, yes, it's a parasite, but the mistletoe bird loves it. Uh, the brush tail possum will eat the leaves. The uh, well, camels, although they're introduced, they regard uh, mistletoe as ice cream. They will bend over backwards to get a big bunch of that. So it's delicious. Um, indigenous children in particular love mistletoe. Often their parents will break a big bush of it, throw it on the ground, look out, you can have that. It will stop you running around my legs while I'm trying to prepare dinner. So there's a lot of very good pluses for mistletoe. Um, and look, this is slightly off the topic. It's about parasites, isn't it? Um, the lucky last one was native pine. It's God's own plant. It's very special. Uh, not the same as the other two. But it, again, it has its own role. So that's my little journey, is putting a voice to the, uh, maybe the voiceless, some of these little plants uh, that exist in this gorgeous country, and uh, then making them available in different ways to beautiful people such as yourself. So I hope you've enjoyed this and uh, I will chat to you no doubt another time.